So to understand a bit about the outdoor education we know of today, it can be useful to look at the outdoor education history and where it's come from. So we're going to look here at particularly a Victorian focus on when did outdoor ed begin in schools and in what form and how did it become part of the curriculum, both uh, F to 10 and VCE. And then how does that historical view influence how it's conducted today? And so let's have a look, we'll dive in, but before we do, let's have a quick reminder of how curriculum is potentially developed throughout uh, time. So curriculum reflects the social concern and as social concern uh, changes uh, then as does the curriculum. So often schooling is charged with sort of fixing social problems. So at the moment it might be how do our children become more resilient. We've, we've got lazy people that sit at home and uh, sit inside and, and play their games all day. And so the problems or issues given most space in society are the ones that are given most import in the curriculum at the time. So often it's reading, writing and arithmetic, but then there's always something else that sort of comes up to help. And so the importance is determined by those holding power. And so of course as power and concern shift, so does the curriculum. And so we can look at uh, outdoor recreation being the basis for our outdoor education in schools currently. So more so in the lower junior, uh, sorry, junior secondary uh, where there's much more recreation focused uh, and then the VCE has kind of taken on a bit more of an environmental and sustainability focus but we can have a look at that a bit later. So we start off with uh, the 1930s and enthusiastic teachers taking students out on extended bushwalks potentially uh, outside of school hours uh, so, and expeditions to Tasmania uh, for example, Geelong College was doing that in the, in the early 40s and then later on that decade uh, Wesley and Caulfield Grammar both established camps, Wesley's being at Chum Creek and now they have uh, three right around the, the state. Uh, Timbertop you may have heard of from Geelong Grammar uh, started up in 1952 and then in the uh, 50s and 60s lots more expansion in uh, school curricula and included extracurricular adventure activities. So again, teachers taking students out to do things like hiking and uh, canoeing and so on. In 1959, the Department of Education established a summer school camp, which is still going strong. In the 60s, Outward Bound came into play in Australia and started off their 26-day programs, which would have influenced some of the teachers' thinking, I think, at the time. In the 70s, schools began to integrate outdoor ed more into the core curriculum. Uh, in the beginning of the, the that decade, Bogon School Camp was established and is now known as Outdoor School, uh, with two campuses, one in Bogong and one in 15 Mile Creek. In 72, there was a, a well-known fatality on Cradle Mountain where a, a student died and that was with the Footscray Tech students. In 73, the school's camps branch was established in the Victorian Department of Education to monitor some of these outdoor activities. They started getting a bit nervous and needed to put some uh, monitoring around it to make sure some of these fatalities didn't happen. Education Department put some dollars into training and support in the 70s and in 1975 this beautiful little booklet called Safety and Adventure Activities was published and it's now grown into a website which you would know as the safety guidelines for education outdoors. The core outcomes remain as personal and group development based on pushing comfort zones and character building exercises, much more in line with uh, Outward Bound, Kurt Hahn kind of stuff. In the late 70s, Rubicon School Camp was established and is still part going strong and part of the Rosa Schools, which uh, Outdoor School is part of, the Residential Outdoor Schools Association. And early 80s saw some belt tightening by the Ministry and in 1991 the Victorian Outdoor Education Association was established, the VOEA, which is now what you would know as Outdoors Victoria. In 82 the schools camps branch was disbanded and individual regions appointed outdoor ed curriculum consultants. 
83 saw outdoor ed include personal development uh, in the personal development area of the school curriculum. So it was getting a bit more into some of the curriculum, just easing in. And then it was a Group 2 Year 12 subject in 1984 as outdoor education. So Group 2 were kind of the lower end, more practical subjects that you would see. In the late 80s, a report from the Ministerial Review of Outdoor Ed acknowledged it was a process of learning, a way of teaching, in addition to the personal framework, uh, sorry, personal development framework published, including outdoor ed as a unique curriculum area. So this is pretty critical. And then we get to the early 90s where outdoor education kind of gets its green on, really. So up until now, it's it's been seen as personal development and uh, character building kind of area. But there was a squeeze on subjects in year 12 as the VCE was being developed and also combined with the growing public concern over environmental issues. And so they started the search which continues today for the distinctive contribution that Outdoor Ed may make. In 1992 VCE was fully, fully established as a VCE subject with human development and human nature relationships at its core. In 96 for the P to 10 curriculum area, the curriculum standards framework, the CSF, course advice for outdoor ed was, was produced. Now this was really important because outdoor ed still wasn't a distinct subject in the a lower secondary curriculum, but this course advice meant that it helped schools produce a subject called outdoor ed and grab content from various different curriculum areas, which is still in play today. At the turn of the century, VCE Outdoor and Environmental Studies merged. Um, they merged the Outdoor Ed and Environmental Studies because both subjects were kind of declining in their popularity and, and uh, uptake and they sort of saw themselves as being fairly similar. So now we have Outdoor and Environmental Studies and, and we're still continuing with that today. And there was also the VET outdoor recreation curriculum created from the national training package which is the kind of content you would see in TAFE in the Cert 4 and Diploma of Outdoor Recreation and separated from outdoor education uh, so there was a, now a distinct differentiation between outdoor recreation and outdoor education. Early 2000 saw the res revised CS CSF into uh, the Victorian Essential Learning Standards, which was the next iteration of the curriculum. And that was about the last time we saw any sort of course advice that helped us create an outdoor education course or, or unit or subject out of the lower curriculum. So today we have outdoor ed on one side, uh, where it was, it's part of the kind of university side of things, teacher education, um, government schools very much do that, human nature, relationships and other educational outcomes are kind of core for that. And you would mainly see schools doing this. And then outdoor recreation on the other side, which is very much the TAFE pathway, registered training organisations and so on, uh, producing certificates, Cert 3, Cert 4, diploma, etc., to produce outdoor recreation instructors. Uh, lots of commercial co uh, organisations running outdoor recreation activities, very much focused on activity and skills, and often still done in schools too. In 2009, the national curriculum debates started up really on inclusion of outdoor ed, the uh, self, others and nature kind of stuff, the personal outdoor experience, the place and the human nature relation ship critique. Uh, so the debate sort of continues and it meant that we didn't quite get it into the curriculum but we'll come to that. In 2010 the Labor state government pledges as an election promise that all year nines will have an outdoor education experience. Unfortunately they lost the election and uh, we're still not there yet. The national curriculum took a while to develop and Finally, in 
about 2015, I think we managed to pilot, or 2000, yeah, 2015, pilot the HPE curriculum, and it's now rolled out uh, as in Victoria as the Vic Curric or the Victorian curriculum. With outdoor recreation and outdoor learning getting a few more mentions, so outdoor recreation I think is listed something like 60 times in the HPE curriculum. So it's still very much a focus in the HPE curriculum, it doesn't have its own, but there's also lots of outdoor education outcomes in other areas like science and geography for example. Uh, so it's still very much made up as a, a bits a subject in lots of schools and then sitting in VCE as well and VCE continues the outdoor ed study design just was revamped for this year so there's a new study design being taught for the next three years at the moment. So let's have a look at some of the differences and similarities in what outdoor education is and it means a, a different thing to every different person you talk to. So as we've said before the basis of outdoor education today is the traditional outdoor recreation. So often seen as a bit of a blend in Australia of some UK influences, the Kurt Hahn outward bound kind of thing, and the US experiential learning project adventure type stuff. So and then blended in with this kind of unique environmental focus in Australia to make up the the three kind of self, others and nature uh, area that we might look at outdoor ed being. Relationships with others, uh, relationships with nature and your self-development or your, your relationship with yourself. So let's have a look at how the field sort of sits and we can break it down, well um, Martin breaks it down into these four areas, corporate training, adventure therapy, outdoor recreation and outdoor education. And they all kind of evolved to have differing educational goals. So if we kick off with outdoor recreation, it looks to increase opportunities for recreation and leather through skill mastery, socialization with the participants, uh, relaxation or a bit of intellectual stimulation. Corporate training is looking to enable uh, groups to improve functionality, communication and vocational vocationally related productivity outcomes so you could also look at some of the uh, project adventure experiential learning activities that you would see in the US uh, coming out of the US in there. Adventure therapy looks at uh, sort of youth at risk um, priest, priest and guests say that it's uh, change seeks to change dysfunctional behavior and patterns using adventure experiences and forms of uh, rehabilitation. And then outdoor education suggesting, Martin suggests that critical outdoor education is concerned with humanity's relationship with nature, aimed at examining outdoor recreation and environmental issues in light of the dominant social order. And we'll look at some of those particular things in other modules as well as we go along. So we can now map these out a bit. And if we look over to the left uh, at, of the spectrum where it's more like traditional outdoor recreation and over to the right of the spectrum where it looks more like critical outdoor education. So we put in the outdoor rec and outdoor education and then we can start looking at the vertical axis and we say that uh, adventure therapy up there is more like personal development over to the right and more like adventure therapy up to the top and then corporate training sits in that box quite nicely and it's more like group development or community development in outdoor ed. And so then we can start to ask about well, where are these connections? Uh, wh what's the common ground that exists in all of these areas? And so we might say that there are kind of three uh, outdoor experiences, activity skills and experiential learning are existing in all three but then what about the environmental issues, the social and cultural justice leadership, teaching and quality and research, where do they sit and perhaps could they sit further in the rest of the, the parts that we all refer to as outdoor education. 